Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we're going to learn about inverses of functions. So before we start, I have a quick warm-up for you. Um, so please pause the video and give these three problems a try. And when you're ready, hit play to check your answers. Alright, so go ahead and check. Um, so remember, if we are solving for y, our goal is to isolate y. So in the first problem, we can subtract 4 from each side um, to solve. In the second problem, we can multiply both sides by 3. Just make sure you're multiplying the entire uh, right side, which means you do need to distribute the 3. And on part c, uh, first add 4 to each side. So remember, when you're adding 4, we're simply adding it to the 10. We're combining like terms. We can't add it to 6x. And then to finish solving, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And notice um, we're dividing the entire side by 2. So make sure you're dividing both 6x and 14 by 2 to get 3x plus 7. Okay, so um, we're going to start by talking about what the inverse of a function is. So the inverse of a function essentially reverses all of the x and y values of the function. So it uh, reverses or swaps the input and the output. So it reverses the input, which is x value, and output, which is y value. Um, so the common way that we write an inverse function, it looks like this. Um, I know it looks like we're doing f to the power of negative 1 times x, but this is simply the symbol for inverse um, of a function. So this is f inverse of x. So again, in this case, it does not mean an exponent to the power of negative 1. It's just the um, symbol we use to denote inverse. So um, as we mentioned, um, all of the x and y values are literally just swaps. So um, let's say you're looking over here and you have a t-chart or you have a few um, coordinates from your original function. So here are the x and y values of f of x, so x f of x. So you can actually um, find the coordinates of all of the inverse function by simply switching x and y. So if these are the coordinates of your original function. f inverse of x would be 4, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 5, 2, and negative 1, 3. So just remember, the coordinates are literally just swapped um, for x and y. So it's really easy to find coordinates of your inverse if you know coordinates of your original function. Um, so just like the x and y values of your coordinates um, swap, the domain and range will also swap. So let's say we have a function f of x whose domain is between uh, negative 2 and infinity, and whose range is all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. The domain and range literally swap, so this domain um, becomes the range down here, and the range will become the domain. So the domain of our inverse, um, or of f inverse of x, is negative infinity to positive infinity, which is all real numbers, and the range is negative 2 to infinity. So kind of cool features of um, the inverse of f of x. So another cool feature of an um, inverse of a function is that it's always going to be a reflection of the original function over the line y equals x. So it's really easy to graph an inverse if you know what the original function looks like. So here's our original function. So first we need to graph this line y equals x. So remember that's just a line, a linear equation uh, who has a y-intercept at 0 and a slope of 1. So it just looks like this. And then from here um, we just need to reflect this line over the line y equals x. So we can take points that we know. So any point that's on the line will stay there. So let's say we wanted to reflect this line, or this point right here. You can see that if we go diagonally, it's like half a box away, so it would reflect right to here. So our inverse would be here. And then let's say we're reflecting this one over the line. So again, we'll just go directly over that line, and it would reflect to here. 
we can reflect this point. So one box diagonally. So we'll go one box diagonally here. We can reflect this. So it's a box and a half. So we go a box and a half. And we end up right here. So by reflecting it over that line, y equals x. So again, this is y equals x. We were able to um, take our function f of x and graph f inverse of x. There you go. Um, and really by reflecting it over the line y equals x, you are essentially just swapping the y and the x. That's what happens when you reflect it over that line. So these are some of the um, properties of an inverse function that might be useful to you as we continue to work with the inverse. So um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, figure out how to find an inverse equation algebraically. So to find the inverse um, algebraically, um, you are going to start by literally swapping x and y in the equation. So that same pattern, x and y are swapped. So you swap their location in the equation, and then you solve for y. So you isolate for y, just like we did in the warm-up. And then once you're done with that, we can just write it with the proper um, inverse notation to show that we're done. So here, we're also going to be checking our work. So by definition, I'll read this and then we'll talk about what it means. f of f inverse of x should equal x, or f inverse of f of x should equal x. So this is essentially saying, if you substitute one equation into the other, um, so either I take f inverse and I substitute it into the original equation, or you take the original equation and you substitute it into the inverse, um, your uh, equation should simplify, and you should end up with just x. And it's really easy to do, and it's a nice way to check um, that your answer is correct. So we're going to be doing this as well when we go through this process of finding the inverse algebraically. Okay, so let's try um, one of these together. So here, find the inverse of f of x equals 3x plus 4. Then we're going to verify that our answer is correct by graphing, and we're going to verify it algebraically. So let's start with the original equation. I'm going to write it like this. So remember, f of x and y are completely interchangeable. They mean the same thing. So step one is to literally swap the positions of x and y. So it's going to say x equals 3y plus 4. So now we just need to solve for y. So it says y equals... So just like in the warm-up, we can start by subtracting 4. So this gives us x minus 4 equals 3y. So remember here, you cannot combine these terms, so they stay separate. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. So remember, we're dividing both x and negative 4 by 3. So we can write this as 1 third x minus 4 thirds equals y. So now that we're finished um, solving for y, this is now our inverse, so we can write it with the proper notation. f inverse of x equals 1 third x minus 4 thirds. So first, um, let's um, graph both of these equations to see if they are reflected over that line y equals x. So if we graph this first equation, f of x, our y-intercept is 4, and our slope is 3. Um, so we can go up 3, right 1, which goes off our graph. So let's work backwards. Down 3, left 1. Down 3, left 1. Down 3, left 1. So this is f of x. Now let's graph what we think um, f inverse of x is. So this has a uh, y-intercept of negative 4 thirds. So we're going to kind of estimate where that is. So it's a little more than 1, or sorry, a little less than negative 1. And our slope is 1 
over three. So we go up one over three, or down one left three, and we get something that looks like this. So this is f inverse of x. And so now we can check um, by graphing that line y equals x to see if it looks like they are reflected over this line. And you can see um, that it is. It does look like if we folded our paper on this line, um, our inverse and original function are reflected over that red line. Um, so we're also going to be checking this algebraically. So remember the way we are going to do that is we're going to be substituting one function into the other. So let's try doing this. I'm going to write it like this. This notation might seem a little confusing for now, um, but we'll walk through it together. Okay, so we're going to take the inverse function and we're going to substitute it into our original function. So our inverse function we know is 1 third x minus 4 thirds. So we're going to be taking that and we're going to replace it where we see the x in our original function. So 3 times 1 third x minus 4 thirds plus 4. So you can see that we took this and substituted it into our original function. So let's simplify now. So here we can distribute. So 3 times 1 divided by 3 is just 1, so this leaves us with 1x. 3 times negative 4 divided by 3, so that 3's cancel out and we're left with minus 4, and then we still have that plus 4. And notice, these will cancel out to 0, so we're left with just x. So we have just shown that f of f inverse of x is equal to x, which uh, proves that this is, in fact, the correct inverse. So again, you can take the inverse function and substitute it into your original function, and it should always simplify to x. All right, let's try one more together. So uh, here we have uh, y equals 2x minus 2. We're going to find the inverse. So step one again, swap x and y. And then we're going to solve for y. So let's add 2 to both sides. x plus 2 equals 2y. And then divide both sides by 2. Make sure you're dividing both x and 2 by 2. So we have 1 half x plus 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, equals y. So this should be our inverse, so let's write it with the proper notation. So 1 half x plus 1. So first, let's graph both equations to see um, if they look like they've been reflected over that line, y equals x. So for f of x, the y-intercept is negative 2. Our slope is 2 over 1, so it looks something like this. And for our inverse, um, our y-intercept is 1, and our slope is 1 half, so we go up 1 over 2. or down one, left two. And we get something that looks like this. Okay, so now if we draw that line y equals x, we can see that the two lines are in fact reflected over that line. So that's one way to check to see if um, your inverse is correct. And we're also is going to check algebraically. Um, so let's do that f of f inverse of x. So again, we're going to be taking f inverse. 
which is 1 half x plus 1, and we're going to substitute it into our um, original function. So 2 times, so wherever we saw an x, we're going to replace it with our inverse. So you can see here, we simply re we substituted that just for x, and now we're going to simplify to see what we get. So we're going to distribute. So here, the 2's cancel out, and it leaves us with just x. 2 times 1 is 2, and then we have minus 2, so this simplifies just to x. So this is how we know that our inverse was correct. All right, so here is the last example for today's video. So please pause the video and give it a try on your own, and then we can check your answer in just a few seconds whenever you're ready. All right, go ahead and check your work. So um, here's the process of finding f inverse of x. So you should get negative 1 half x plus 3 half. So the big step here, make sure you're dividing both terms by negative 2. So this becomes negative 1 half x. This becomes positive 3 halves because the negatives cancel out. Um, so here you can see that I graphed f of x and f inverse of x, and they do reflect over that line y equals x. And then you can see here that I checked algebraically by doing f of f inverse of x. So again, you substitute your inverse into the original function for x, and you simplify. So here, the negatives and the 2's cancel out. Here, this becomes negative 3. The 2's cancel out, but you're left with negative 3. And then you have plus 3, which um, turn to 0. So as long as you end up with x, you know that your answer is correct. Okay, um, that is all for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching.